How do your eyes adjust to the dark and why does it take longer to adjust to the dark than to the light? Stay tuned. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you about scotopic vision. We've discussed some basics about the senses and the difference between sensation and perception before on the channel, but I thought it might be fun to take a deeper dive on how light turns into brain signals that you perceive. The other day, I was eating M&Ms in my closet. If you're a parent, you will understand this behavior. Don't judge me. I was having a hard time telling the colors apart. This bothered me at first, but then I remembered they're all the same flavor and it definitely didn't bother me after that. Ha <laughs> ha. You may have noticed that in the dark, it can be really hard to sense a color. And this is because we have not one, but two types of vision. Photopic vision is primarily used in bright light and it's how we sense colors. Scotopic vision, on the other hand, helps us adjust to very dark conditions, but doesn't have pigments that allow us to see color. But it is really important to helping us see in many different environments. You see, one of the big problems the brain has to solve is how to sense a large range of stimuli. For example, we can only see a small range of the electromagnetic spectrum, which we perceive as light and color. We can't see infrared or ultraviolet or microwaves or radio waves, even though they are the same thing as the visible light spectrum. But our eyes can adjust to see things in only the light of starlight or a blisteringly bright sunny day with a million times more light than that starlit night. This is called the dynamic range, which describes the limits or range of how much change in sensation we can detect. In order to accomplish having a large dynamic range, evolution has made some compromises. We can see the full dynamic range, but only a portion of that range at one time. Going from one extreme to the other requires an adjustment period. That's where scotopic vision comes in allowing us to adjust to extremely low light levels. Now it takes a long time, about 30 minutes, for what we call a dark adaptation for our vision to adjust to the dark. Any exposure to light will undo this rapidly in about 30 seconds. Amateur astronomers often wear eye patches so that one eye stays adjusted to the dark when they're out in the field. On naval ships at night, the lights below decks are often red because red doesn't interfere with scotopic vision. And then the sailors need their night vision for when they're above decks. Most of us have had the experience of leaving a movie theater to go to the bathroom and seeing just fine. But when we come back, we can't see anything at all. And you wind up accidentally sitting with strangers who get upset when you reach over to share the popcorn. Then when you leave the theater after the movie, the sun seems incredibly bright and you can't even find your way to the police car. So that's what it is, but how does it work? This is gonna get a little bit detailed, but bear with me because it's really cool. To understand this, we first have to understand a little bit about the structure of your eyes. Inside your eye is a thin layer of tissue called the retina, which functions sort of like a projector screen. Light passes through the lens of your eye and focuses the image on the retina. Now the retina is made up of specialized neurons that detect the light called rods and cones. Cones are especially important in photopic vision, which we'll discuss maybe in a future video. Whereas rods are especially important in scotopic vision. Rods are named after their elongated shape since they have tall stacks of folded discs like a stack of pancakes on one end. The other end works a lot like any other neuron, sending action potentials and releasing neurotransmitters. Here's an important side note. We've mentioned this a few times before on our channel, but neurons in your body are constantly active. They fire at a baseline rate, but their activity can go up or down. Increases in activity are called excitation, and decreases in activity are called inhibition. 
Now keep this in mind as we move forward because these rods work through the inhibition of normal baseline activity. The rods are connected to bipolar cells and are normally very active, releasing glutamate, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. This reduces the activity in the bipolar cells. Now to turn the bipolar cells on, we have to inhibit the inhibition, which results in excitation. It's crazy, I know. Anyway, back to the pancakes. The real name of the pancakes is lamelle. Each one is covered in a special type of receptor called rhodopsin. Now, rhodopsin has two parts. The first part is a protein made by your body that is on the cell membrane and is capable of opening and closing ion channels to change the electrical potential of the cell. Now, if none of that ion channel business made sense, then maybe check out our video on how action potentials work. Uh, hopefully that'll kind of give you an idea of what's going on. The second part of rhodopsin is a molecule called retinol that we get from our diet, and it's a form of vitamin A. Retinol is something called a photoisomer, meaning it changes when exposed to light. In the dark, we call it 11 cis retinol, and it has a sort of bent shape in it. As little as a single photon of light hitting the molecule can cause that bend to straighten out and that transforms it into something we refer to as all trans retinol. Now, when it transforms, the opsin it's attached to triggers a chain reaction of events inside the cell, which lead to the closing of an ion channel. That prevents positively charged sodium ions from entering the cell as they normally do, and this hyperpolarizes the membrane, making it harder to fire. Since its activity is slowed down, the cell stops releasing glutamate onto a bipolar cell that it's connected to, resulting in an increase in activity of the bipolar cell. From there, the signal from the bipolar cell goes on to your brain to be processed into edges and shapes and the forms that you perceive. To get all trans retinol back to 11 cis retinol, you need a series of enzyme reactions to take place, which takes about 10 minutes for each molecule after which it can bind to a new opsin molecule and be ready to repeat the process. So that's how it works. I know that was a lot to take in, but think about how amazing this is. A concert of billions of tiny molecules dancing in photons of starlight causes changes in your brain which allow you to see. Scotopic vision is awesome. Now, some fun facts. Roto is derived from the ancient Greek word for rose, and opsis, as in optical, means sight. Rhodopsin is named for its purplish red color, and one of my favorite animals, the praying mantis, has vision that works much like ours. If you happen across a praying mantis in the dark, its eyes will most likely be a rich dark purple, whereas if you put it in the light, they will change to transparent and appear to be the color of the mantis. That purple color is due to the rhodopsin, which is sometimes referred to as visual purple. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button. Do you have a movie theater story? Leave a comment below. Help us out, subscribe to Cyber Society to help us make more videos like this one and get the word out about important topics in psychology. And until next time, keep thinking.